Hi there. I'd like to show you in this video how you can load CAD data into your GIS database and also how you can allow people to upload that data uh, through a web page provided by FME server. So here's the data itself. Uh, if I do an inspection using Universal Viewer I can see that it's lines uh, and that there's labels here. I'd like to turn these into polygons and I'd like to put this label on that polygon. So let's go into Workbench and get started. So File, New, going to generate a workspace and I'm going to go from that DWG file to Oracle Spatial, come in here and I'm going to fill out the parameter. So now I've got my service name filled out and my username and my password as well. I can click OK and now FME is going to go ahead and take that AutoCAD file, do its best interpretation of it, and going to give me, I want just the labels and the parcels, I'll leave the rest of the data there, and it gives me uh, a starting point to build a workspace. But of course it's not perfect because I want to actually uh, build these parcels. So the first thing I'll do is I'll insert an area builder transformer, and what that will allow me to do is to build up some areas. So we'll connect an inspector here, and you'll actually see the areas come out here in the Universal Viewer. So now we have areas instead of just lines, which is great. So the next step is to get the, the label into an attribute, so a text property extractor, which I can connect like so, and then I can connect that up. The text string I'll call here a parcel ID, so that's the parcel ID. It's now a, an actual attribute, and now I want to overlay that parcel ID uh, point with the area. So I'll do a point on area overlay, like so, and the points are coming in there, the areas are coming in there, and then what I get out of there should be some areas with a parcel ID on them. And that'll show up in the Universal Viewer, so a great little tool for inspecting. Uh, it can tell you how many uh, overlaps there were between the points and the, line, uh, the polygons, and here is the parcel ID. So now I also have some external data in an access database, typical of CAD to have some external uh, thing like that. And I can come in here and I can do a join, so I can join the data together. So I'm going to come in here, it's an access database as it turns out, I'm going to come into that access database, select it, go through this joiner, I'm going to use the parcel ID as the key from the database to join to, I'm going to join, uh, define the join there, I'm going to bring every column across from the database, and then I'm going to finish up, and again I can do an inspection, view that, and the Universal Viewer will show me what I've got here. come in, I inspect that, and if I scroll down I can start to see that I've got more information here than before. Land use, lot, all kinds of stuff. So the next step is to actually define the output. I don't need the labels, I just need the parcels, but I don't have all the attributes on there so I can connect them, and I can right click here and I can go copy attributes from transformer, there's the joiner, like so, and then it's a simply a matter of coming in here and deleting anything that I don't want. just like so. Then I go ahead and I can run that workspace. So I'm taking that CAD, going through, doing a join, all the way out, and then I'm going to uh, load that into Oracle. Now the next step is to actually confirm that that data went into Oracle properly, so I will use the Universal Viewer for that. So I'm going to right click, and I'm going to inspect that data. Now I'm looking straight at the Oracle database. It's going to ask me for my connection information again. And so I can enter that here and pick my table like so, support parcel, that's what I loaded in there, bring it up and I can come in here and I can see my data now in my Oracle database with the proper attributes on them. Um, uh, next I'm going to show you how you can add some validation rules in here, perhaps uh, some of the data coming out is, is not as you expected. Uh, the first thing you can see is that there are some unused lines here, so if I drag that down and I hit play, we'll be able to see those unused lines come up in the Universal Viewer. So what that tells me when we see them, here they come, is that either these need to be closed or they need to be considered or maybe they're not important but they're flagged there for me to see. Now the next where, uh, area where I can add in some validation 
is after the overlay. So we can see we have 227 features coming in, so points, label points, but not as many polygons. So there's some sort of disconnect there. So what I can do is I can add in a tester transformer, which will allow me to split out and see. Well, what will it allow me to see? Will it allow me to see if there is an overlap equal to 1, which is good. It should pass, otherwise we should inspect it, and I'll also view the labels at the same time. And let's see what happens here. So we're testing to see if more than one point or no points landed inside a polygon. And here we can see there are some that failed. So if we zoom in here, we can see that there's overlaps of zero. Uh, we can come in down here perhaps, and we can see can see an overlap of two and that is because well that polygon should probably be split so we can deal with that actually in workbench but I'm just gonna focus on the validation for now I'm gonna take that away and so what I'm gonna do now is go beyond that test and let's see what we want to do um, perhaps we have seen that there are some areas that are are a zero area for some reason we come in here and we can do a area calculator like so which will give us the area in that attribute and then we can do a test on that so we can test and see if the area is greater than say one so then it passes and it's fine otherwise maybe we want to log it so we can insert loggers here we can put a logger there logger there put another logger here and this will log out the data so we can look at it later if we want um, it's just one option that we have so we run it through and now we've got kind of th two validation tests and another sort of implicit or built-in validation test and you can see it is logging some things out uh, and those are those ones that uh, those uh, polygons we saw in the viewer already so already we're making our data better the end product better now let's skip beyond validation and let's go to FME server take away the loggers. Right, so next I can upload or publish this to FME server so that people can run it uh, through a web browser so they don't have to know what uh, what workbench is or anything like that. I'm going to put that in a repository called video demo. I'm going to leave this parameter published which is the source for that Autodesk parameter uh, file and that allows the end user to provide that data. We'll see that in a second. I'm not going to upload the the data we're gonna let the user do that keep it with the job submitter service now it's on FME server I can bring over this window here which is our FME server I can come in log in I can go to the job submitter service into the video demo repository into configure and I can go here and upload my own data now I don't have to uh, now now I'm using a, a web page here. I don't have to be on the same machine. I come in and I choose that file here, just like so. Perfect. I give it a run and now I, uh, my data is being pushed to the server, uh, being converted from CAD data into a GIS format and loaded into Oracle. And here we can see 197 features went in, no problem. How can we go uh, one step fur further with this? How about, uh, let's say you want to know, you want an administrator to always know if a job fails. Well, to do that, we can come into the administration interface for FME server. I'm already logged in here. Come to the notifications tab. And when a job fails, I can find an email uh, to be sent there. So to configure that, I come in here and I input the server that I'm going to use and in this case I'm going to use uh, Gmail's public server for SMTP and then the password here we go who am I going to send it to I want to send it to Aaron plus admin at safe.com uh, it's going to be from Aaron at safe.com like so and this is going to say um, job has failed or encountered an error so 
So there we go, that's all it is to it. I click OK, and now it's defined. Now to use that, I can come back to here, come back to the same form, but now I'm going to, as the end user, I'm going to put in my, my own email. So let's say Aaron, uh, uh, let's see, Aaron at example.com. Let's just say that's my personal email address. Again, I'm going to come in and upload that data, but I've al already done it. It remembers it, so there it is. And I give it a run. And now, if this failed, I would get an email. But it's going to work, so let's cause it. Let's cause an error instead. Let's come back here. Let's browse. Let's pick this MDB file and let's use it instead of the DWG. Now that will certainly should cause an error. So let's come in here. Okay, like so. Give it a run. Now FME server, this web page, it just goes, okay, I'm submitting the job. You'll get an email later um, telling you about the success. So this person, or failure, this person is going to get an email. But also, the administrator is going to get an email. So let me go and check that. All right, so I pulled up my email here, and I click on the email I've received. And it turns out that, yes, uh, there has been an error, and I can look in the log file and check that out. Uh, if I want as the administrator it's no problem uh, so that's how you can you can go from from CAD data uh, bringing that into GIS perform some validation publish it to the server allow people who don't know anything about FME server to uh, provide their data uh, up there uh, administrators will be up uh, told if there's an email uh, by email if there's an error and uh, basically making it a lot easier to get data into your system. Thanks for your time.